I'd like to start this part of the talk by going over Granton's music venues. We still have the Craiglin Hotel, the Ben Moore, the Claymore Bar, Grant Arms, Garth Hotel, the Craig Bar, which used to be called Craig Rayback, and more recently the Pagoda. But that's less than a third of the venues we had in Granton 50 years ago. We had the Dunvegan Hotel with Fred and Eleanor Walker, the Drill Hall, where the RAF Outdoor Centre is now, the Seafield Lodge with Nigel Grant in the 70s and 80s, the Rose Hall run by Viv and Margaret McLennan, the cellar at the Ben Moor with a big green nessie at one end. It was very popular for its folk nights and discos in the 60s and 70s. The Strathby Hotel, or the Strath as it was known, which had a number of different owners, but really popular with locals in the 80s when it was run by Scotty and Margaret Martin. The Victoria Institute, now called the YM, or the Community Centre. The Craigland Hall, which was a very popular dance hall in the 50s and 60s. It stood behind the Craigland Hotel. The Coppice, which is now called the Speyside Hotel, previous owners have been the Monroes and the Penders, and when I came to Granton and played for the bus tours in the 80s and 90s, it was owned by Norman and Aileen McIntosh, then Darren and Denise McLean, and then Frank and Sandra from Holland, who didn't do so well running the Coppice, and it was closed for quite a while after that. But there's no live music there anymore, which then there was the Spey Valley Hotel at Gordon Hall down Seafield Avenue with Jimmy Grant in the 60s and into the 70s. Here he is behind the bar and Sandy Grant in the 70s and 80s. And of course there was the Waterford Hotel with Jimmy and Margaret Calder. Here they are. And some of the regulars. We also had the palace, which I'll say a bit more about. The palace was owned by Mr. Hastelow in the 50s, followed by Nigel and Sheila Grant in the 60s and 70s. They saw the potential for a bar and hall suitable for dancing, so a bar and ballroom dance hall was built at the back of the palace. Here's a photo of Nigel Grant with Jimmy Grant from the Spey Valley, obviously running a raffle in the palace. A group called the Johnny Douglas Combo was resident band six nights a week in the 1960s. They had Johnny Douglas on guitar, Lindsay Scott on vocals, Alex Ross on drums, Bobby Kerr on piano and George Burns on bass. Three of them were from Nairn, the other two from Glasgow. They were an exceptionally talented and versatile band. This picture shows Nigel and Sheila Grant on the front left. They even had a record release called Ski Jump, partly sponsored by local lawyer Gordon McCulloch. Here's a short excerpt from their recording. Through the 60s and 70s, large functions continued, with weddings and parties, as well as a very important addition, Saturday night dinner dances. These became legendary, with people coming from all over the north to them. This was evening entertainment for guests, Kayleys for the fishers, and dances for the curlers and the skiing guests. Other bands appeared as well. Billy and Eileen Much and their band played at some of the Kayley nights. The modern Nairs from Forest began playing every second Saturday, and they built up a following here too. George McIntosh with his band took over the alternate weekends. 
Back in the 60s, George McIntosh went out entertaining with McLean Willie and Spoons Ferguson at places like the Spey Valley. George taught his son David the piano, so when he was about 12, he went out with his dad. They played for the Scottish country dancing and then were on hall every fortnight. That got them known, so they were asked to play at other venues. At first, George played button accordion, but then changed to piano accordion. They regularly played at the Blind Society in Inverness. George's brother John was blind. Bill Young from Dunfield joined them on piano, and that's him on piano accordion there, and George's son David played guitar. Alston Masson then joined them on drums. He was drum major with the Spike Band. This meant they could play for bigger events. They were resident band in the palace from about 1970. They played for the Saturday night formal dinner dances. This is the band in the palace. Bill Young is on the piano out of the picture to the right. George's son David went off to university, so Basil Dunlop inherited his red tartan jacket and joined the band. So a wee bit about Basil. When Basil lived in Lockerbie in the early 60s, he played with a show band called the Gallivanters. In the 1960s, Basil was part of the Clachan Players folk group. In the 1980s, Basil played regularly in the Craiglin Hotel. Ronnie Douglas also joined the George McIntosh Dance Band as a piper. Ronnie also played the accordion and has played with many other bands over the years, including the Strathspey and Real Society, as we saw, and the Ann Dixon Band. This is Ronnie playing more recently with a group in Inverness. The palace closed about 1977, so they moved to the Craiglin Hotel. Norman McLeod and Alan Bantick were in the band for a while, and Brian Watt took over from Alastair Masson on drums. In 1983, George's son David was working at CERN in Geneva, so the band went out to play for the Highland Society there. They had to borrow a drum kit, as Brian's drums wouldn't get on the plane. David sent me these photos of their time there. And here's Ronnie, Basil, George and Bill at a practice session. There's George and the band playing in the Craig Glen. George had a great interest in how accordions worked, so he went to Dundee to learn from Tommy Ford who could tune accordions. George and friends would take trips to Italy to visit accordion factories, where he learned how to tune reeds and do maintenance and repairs. Murray Balfour from the accordion shop in Inverness came to advise George, and they would go to Italy together. Most recently, George played in the Craig Lynn with Bill Young and Basil Dunlop. COVID hit. George died three years ago and in memory of George, Neil Mackay from Harris composed a jig called Geordie McIntosh of Granton. Back in the 1970s, Netta Bench started the Fiddle and Accordion Society at her house. She gathered many players, including her husband, Joe, Sandy and Eric Perry, Jenny McClure, um, Willie and Martha Dan, Betty, and by Betty Grant, they were often with me, um, Billy and Eileen Much, Alan Brown, um, Ronnie Douglas, Tommy Ogilvie, and Donnie Black, all names from them. When, of course, Colin played with something. Um, this photo shows Netta at the front, and at the back left is Jenny McClure, and there's Willie Grant and Martha, which you can't quite see, uh, Betty Grant, 
than Sandikari in tomography. Soon they expanded to over 20 players and entertained many concerts in the area. But there's George McIntosh, Ronnie Douglas, Sandy, Angie, uh, Jimmy McLeod, Bill Grant, Martha and Betty, uh, Sandy Perry, Grant Nicholson, Tommy Ogilvy, Netta and Ian, Eileen, Jenny and Jimmy McKinnon. In the front row, do you recognise his voice? Uh, Callum, Kenneth Perry, and Malcolm Smith, I can <laughs> from, from about 1986 to the mid-90s, the Fiddle and Accordion Society would meet at the Waterford once a month, inviting a different guest after each meeting. It was normally compared by Murray B.T. Netta herself also sang at many Kayleys and concerts throughout the 70s, alongside the likes of Robert and Sandra, look at this. Clive Freshwater, from Cambridge to Hell. Uh, Ian Fraser, uh, he was always in his pipes. And Anne Dixon as well, she was on the go. There was a more informal group of accordion players in the early 80s. Uh, it was started by Jordy Mack and the met in the Dunbegin. Players like Davy Watt, Paul Fabwin, Ronnie Douglas and Sandy McConaughey would go along and provide music for locals and hotel residents. The Dunfield Dance Band formed in 1974 with Sandy McConaughey on accordion, Grant Nicholson on fiddle, Neil MacDonald on drums and vocals up to 1986, Marianne Nicholson as Grant's sister was the first pianist, Donnell Clark took over on piano in 1976. She became Donnell Nicholson when she married Grant. Jim Buchan played bass for Sam for two years in the 1970s. Brian Watt took over drums in 1986. Sandy's son Ranald took over on keyboard in the late 80s. Their lineup ever since has been Sandy on accordion, Grant on fiddle, Brian Watt on drums, and Ranald on keyboards. At first, the band played for Kayleys at the Craigwood, the singer Betty Maitland, Piper Ian Fraser, and Lucy was Jimmy Shanks, and the compere was John Burgess. They have played for old time dances at the Grand Arms, Waterford, Anvey and Cromdale Halls, and the Nibberallan Hall. From 1978 onwards, they played Messy Hotel alternate week with Billy and Eileen Munch, where the compere was Sean Sutton. More recently, they have played Carbridge Hotel. Boat Hotel and Nethy Hotel in the summer months. The music you hear is Sandy playing at home with me on piano a few weeks ago. Here's a short clip of the band playing for Akele in September this year at the Strasbourg Fiddle Festival in the Ben Moore. <laughs> and there's Sandy at his home at Dunfail. And the matches. <coughs> the house was always a place for musical get togethers. If you were keen in traditional Scottish music, you went along for a tune and often up, ended up staying the night. <laughs> in the 1950s, Billy and Eileen played as Sheepskin and the Tomahawks at the old Bill Hall in Granton and various other venues. Hugh McLeod was on drums. Graham Grant also played drums with them for a while as did Bert Thompson occasionally. And there's Ali. He was taught the saxophone by a, a well-known musician at the time, Sandy Hare, and went out to play sax with his mum and dad when he was about 12. And there's Neil playing the trumpet, hiding behind the mic. The band went on to play the Palace Hotel on Saturday nights and then changed to the Nazi Hotel and played the endless Fridays. <coughs> then Grassic took over as a drummer as they became the Shaspey Dance Band. Colin Bench also joined the band and this lineup continued for a few years till Colin joined the area. There is a really good photo that Neil had of 
and his mom and dad were left there. Um, there's a few people you might know. There's Trevor here, Eric Perry, Sandy Perry, Meta, Marion Hamilton, Calvin, Jenny, Irene, and Johnny Olsen. And then in the middle, Ronnie Douglas, Mark Fess, and Dr. Um, I was reminded this was Shirley Marson, uh, but I don't know the other girl. But that's just going to be in with the guys. <laughs> Lily and Eileen also went out in their own playing in pubs in the area. Here's a different colour. <laughs> That's in the Ben Moore. And there's Ali much in the left, and me and the left, and Colin. And it's another good singer guitarist uh, who we talk with, Gordon Stewart. Not only much, also went out playing with Gilly. And when Colin Bench returned to Grantham, he joined them as well. And the trio played as the Elm Street Boys. None joined them. And this was the start of the Anne Dixon Band. Anne was born in the 1950s to Margaret and Jimmy Ross, who at that time owned the Rowan Lee Hotel in Carbridge. Here's her father, Jimmy. He liked to play the fiddle along with other local musicians, such as Billy and Eileen and Netta Bench. When just 12, Anne got her first guitar and went out singing Scottish traditional songs in the Rowan Lee and in Carbridge Hotel where Clive Freshwater ran folk nights. She then went on to sing at the folk nights in Aviemore Centre, where she learned from well-known folk singers of the time, from Barbara Dixon to the McCalmans. She also started to play other styles of music, like country and western, blues, swing and pop. When just 17, she teamed up with Pat and Linda Mitchell, two sisters who had moved to Carbridge. They were soon playing six to seven nights a week, all over the valley and further afield. They were just known as Anne, Pat and Linda, until when helping to write the programme for Carbridge Cayley Week, Anne just put us in her notes, which then turned into us. This was in 1979. Us made a recording at Alan Bantic studio, which they saw at the end of gigs. Sadly, Pat was only 73 when she passed away. Linda was a maths teacher at Granton Grammar and is now a famous Scottish crime fiction writer. After that, Anne joined LP for a couple of years. Then when Gilly, that's Michael John McGilligan, moved to Carbridge, she provided backing vocals for his and Bill Paul's albums, recorded in Redwood Studios in Carbridge. This led her into making her own recordings of her favourite songs, which she called Once in a Blue Moon. This is where the Elm Street Boys come into the picture again. She joined Gilly, Ali Much and Colin Bench. When Gilly left for Denmark, Dougie Edwards Sr. joined them on piano and Ali suggested that they call themselves the Anne Dixon Band. Later, Lal McLeod joined them on bass and for bigger gigs they wanted a drummer so Mike George from Inverness made them a six-piece band. For a while they had various other players such as Alan Brand, Graham Anderson, Rachel Sermani and Fraser Stone. As time went on, Dougie Edward Jr. took over bass 
and Sam McLeod was on the drums. And for weddings, Ronnie Douglas and sometimes Graham Mackay added to the band. Then Michael McLennan from Nathan Bridge joined them on keyboard and vocals. At their busiest time, they were doing 80 weddings a year, plus farmer show dances and other big functions. Here's their lineup in 2005. Another band formed with some of the same members, called The Approvals. They comprised of Michael, with his sister Catherine, and his brother Andrew, with Dougie Edwards Jr. and Sam McLeod. This was at the Cairn. Some years later, Michael moved to Ireland, where he has made a very successful career performing, teaching and composing music for film and television. Here is a couple of short clips. Hold on to your aching heart I'll wipe the liquor from your Small town hero never dies He fades a bit and then he slips Down into the blast furnace In the heat of the open heart And at the punch clock he remembers Black Hawk and the white wing dove Back to the Ann Dixon Band. After many years, Ali and Dougie decided to retire from the band. Sam joined Graham and they started the band Tweed. I'll mention them later. This left Ann, Callum, and young Dougie Edwards and a couple of drummers, Norman McLean and Martin Oparka, who are still playing to this day. Here is Ann and Callum playing They Call Me the Breeze. <laughs> I got a green light, baby. I got a key. Alan's mother, Netta, was his inspiration, and his folks regularly held parties on a Saturday night with fellow musicians. Colin played fiddle with the Strasby Fiddle and Accordion Society until the early 80s. And he also played with the Strasby Dance Band. Here's another picture I showed before. Callum on the right jamming with Billy Much and myself. Callum and Ali also went out entertaining in places like the Strath Lounge and the Ben Moore. They also had their own band called Syndicate, along with Russell Ferguson and Graham Grant. They were a regular spot in Mr B's bar, which used to be a public bar in the Grant Arms. In the mid-80s, Callum was guitarist and backing vocalist for Panache and Abby Moore. Callum got to know the late Bill Paul and played some gigs and did recording work with him. Bill Paul moved to Holland and when he was there he composed a Christmas song. Here's a clip of it.
Towards the end of the 80s, Callum joined the Elm Street Boys, Gilly on guitar and vocals, Ali Much on sax and vocals, and Callum on bass, guitar and vocals. In the early 90s, Callum joined the Anderson Band, who he's been with ever since. Callum got involved with the Space Movement and now works with Charlie McCarran, Hamish and Finlay Napier, and Ewan Robertson, all fantastic local musicians. They deliver traditional music sessions to primary school children all over the Highlands. I've now covered a number of bands here in the last 50 years. There was another dance band that I might come to at the end the first time. However, there are many other talented musicians in this area. Here are Robert and Sandra from Carbridge. Robert and Sandra got together in 1971 and went out entertaining locally, singing country, folk and Scottish music. They were in the Clachan Players and played at local charity concerts, mainly at the Waterford. While on holiday at Skegness in 1972, they won the local heat of the talent contest and went to air for the finals. In 1973, they went to Aberdeen to meet Huey Green and audition for Opportunity Knox. They found this was a great experience. From the mid-70s to early 80s, they played on Friday nights in the Nessie Hotel to bus parties, hosted by Ewan Sutton, and went parkless whiskey tasting evenings. In the early 80s, they played in the Strath Lounge. From 82 to 86, they were the regular Friday night band at Loch and Hooley, which was very popular with locals who would come from miles around to hear live music. Ainsley the Crookshank played with them on mandolin. There were many other local musicians over this period that I have to mention, some from Nessie Bridge, including Neil Trail, Ewan Ross, Annie George, Sandy Watt, that's father of Hilda Watt, with the dancing school, and Judy Mitchell, a talented pianist who played at lots of concerts. This is when Judy and Bill stayed at Killin, and all the entertainers had gathered together as Ali Buchanan and friends. There's a photo of Jean and Davy Irvin, and Mimi Alexander. They entertained in the Hawk at Cromdale, St Vincent's Canusi, the Spey Valley, Grant House and many other old folks' homes, both locally and in Inverness. <laughs> 